Zamel, all artsy fartsy. Mm. So we were talking about fragrance earlier, yeah. and I know you can't wait to introduce our next guest. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not just because he's from Penang as well. Uh, now not <laughs> so much. I know his school is from already. Rival school. Rival. <laughs> <laughs> My school. It's cool. Uh, well, we have Josh Lee in the studio, and he is the founder of Heritage. Uh, they are actually a, a company that seeks to uh, embody the heritage of scent. So thank you for being here in the studio. It's a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, my pleasure too. <laughs> oh man, you can sense it. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm in the middle. Can you see that? <laughs> so Josh, uh, you're a fragrance director. Yeah. What exactly does a fragrance director do? Um, basically, I have to um, oversee the fragrance business and I have to do the formulation from formulation part until uh, marketing, sales right. and launching the, the perfumes. Right. So earlier we introduced uh, the word perfumer mm. uh, and, and I said it's nez because I'm not really French. Nez. Well, what do you really nez. call it? The nez. The nez. It means, French, uh, it means nose in French. Nose. Mm. So you have a very uh, educated nose. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you need training. That means okay. we are trained to smell like um, 300 ingredients oh, wow. to, to make, I mean, that can be used to make a perfume. Wow. You're like a chef, only you just use yeah, your nose. Use, yes, true. Nice. Okay, tell us why. Why did you choose to become a perfumer out of all the things that you could be doing? Um, since young, um, I already been exposed to scents. And especially um, when I was like three years old, my dad used to spray cologne on me. <laughs> and then I was raised by my grandma mm -hmm. and she likes to use Chanel number no. 5. So it's, it always reminds me of her uh. and the, the kind of scent, the powdery and rose scents. Yeah. Wow, your grandma used <laughs> Chanel number no. 5. Yeah, right? <laughs> Alright, so um, you fell in love with perfume and scent at a very young age. Uh, so tell us about your journey. What did you do after after school? Um, after school, I was looking for a perfumery school in Malaysia, but unfortunately, there there is none here, mm. and that's how. But I did uh, my first degree in chemistry from UPM, mm -hmm. and then from there, um, like my final year project, I do um, extraction of essential oils wow. from bases, mm. and but it's somehow a bit related to perfume. And then, um, but I took French courses during my my study in UPM. Mm -hmm. And then I went to ask um, in Alliance Francaise, um, where can I study fragrance or perfumery courses in France? So they recommended me to this school. This is a very old perfumery school, very famous in France. It's called Ipsica at Versailles. And then I wrote to them and luckily they were having the first international course for international students mm -hmm. and it's a two-year program and 90% of the course is in English oh. so only 10% in French so um, but I didn't go straight away because um, they were having a renovation in the school so oh. I joined a year later Mm -hmm. So we are the first batch of these uh, European Fragrance and Cosmetic Master right. course. So what, what, did, what, what kind of uh, subjects do you learn then? Like? We learn um, the history of perfumes, the different families of fragrances, mm -hmm. and then we learn like 300 ingredients, uh, how does it smell like, and then we have to like, smell it every day. Mm -hmm. And then we learn how to formulate perfumes, because like a perfume, it can contain like 30 to 100 uh, types of ingredients. Mm -hmm. So, so Georgetown perfumes, uh, Georgetown is what you found it to basically encapsulate the heritage of scent in Penang. Uh, I can't relate to that. <laughs> I don't. I don't smell Penang. I taste Penang. I see Penang, but but the smell. What what do you associate with the scent being heritage in Penang? Um, actually, we have a little story that is based on the the scent of Georgetown. Mm -hmm. It's it's it's. That is based back um, during colonial times, whereby Penang is a very popular trading port for spices. So the, the story is, um, there is a colonial merchant sitting at the jetty, mm -hmm. and then he was waiting for the ship to come in. And then he, while waiting, he was sipping uh, a bergamot tea, that's why you have the citrus smell. And then he can feel the sea breeze, that's why we have the sea water. And then, um, when the ships came in, then he went down to check the stocks of the spices 
And then we have like cinnamon, nutmeg, you know, cardamom, and star anise. And then surrounding that, there are um, roses and hibiscus. Mm -hmm. And then with the olden houses uh, made of wood. So to all, to him, this is the quintessential scent of Georgetown. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have put in all these elements in Georgetown perfume. And when you smell it, there are four main accords. The first of course is a sea breeze from the sea water. And then the second accord is the spices. That's why we have like um, the star anise, cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, and uh, cardamom. Right. Josh, can you explain to us briefly what, what you're what doing at the moment? Yeah. All right, um, this is, um, I'm mixing the perfume with different kind of essential oils. Um, we have like um, star anise, cardamom, nutmeg, and then we have the hibiscus extract. So we need to mix it and then in the end, um, we, we use uh, the nature alcohol to complete the formula. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I read somewhere there's no one correct way to make perfume. There are many different ways to make perfume. Do you agree to that? Or is there a standard set rule when it comes to making perfume? I mean, you're, I think you're talking about how to extract the ingredients. Okay. Because okay. there are different ways to extract ingredients mm -hmm. too. And then um, different ways like for flowers, you use different methods. For wood, you use different methods. And then, but to blend a perfume, you basically is you need to have a concept and then you just messy and then it must be so that the, the ingredients must be um, compatible the scent mm -hmm. must be compatible right. with, blend with each other so how long does the process take for you to come up uh, with a certain smell um, the process is quite simple but the most complicated part is the the, the idea and the concept mm. because like georgetown we have to i have to do a study research on the history the culture of georgetown mm -hmm. so once the when we, when we get to learn the history and culture, then, then the, the conceptualization of the perfume, then make it, making the perfume is easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how long have you guys been in business already? Um, almost a year. Mm -hmm. We and are fairly new. What kind of uh, response have you got from the market? Mm. Um, basically, this scent is quite universal because this is a uni unisex perfume. And I am quite lucky because um, a lot of tourists like um, from uh, Australia, Europeans, even like the, the Chinese from Singapore, China and even like the Indians and Malays, they, they are attracted to the scent because mm -hmm. it's quite um, refreshing and also very, um, very soft and floral. Right. So because usually unisex perfume, you can't have it too strong, yeah. right? Because uh, so what kind of, what, what are the main ingredients that you use then? Like, do, do you prefer to have like floral scent, you know, like what kind of uh, smell? It's more towards um, citrus with a bit of spicy and floral mm -hmm. to make, um, because citrus note usually is more masculine mm -hmm. right. and then uh, floral note is more feminine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you spray the perfume, at first the top note is quite uh, masculine with the citrusy, right, right. the bergamot smell, right, right. but after like 20 minutes, you can smell the, the floral note and then at the end is the woody note. Nice, nice. That's a very nice way of describing scent. Um, you, you spoke to us earlier about how different scents or different perfumes will smell differently on different person's skin. Yeah. So how do uh, individuals who are untrained without the educated <laughs> nose go about picking a perfume for themselves? Um, actually, it depends on the individual. If you want to select a, a, a perfume, usually you try maybe three of perfumes first. Mm -hmm. and then you have to clear a nose with coffee beans. Yes. <laughs> and then once you, you shortlisted maybe one or two perfumes, then you spray on your skin. Because um, different perfumes act differently on different skins. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you see, um, our, our body has different pH and then some people they sweat more. Mm. So you react with the, the perfume. So usually, if you are in a hurry, because perfume consists of three main notes, top note, hard note, and base note. So usually when you spray, you smell the top note first for the right. first 10 minutes. Right. But sometimes when you want to buy a perfume, um, you only smell the top note. So usually, I will teach people to um, spray and then you rub on your wrist. And then by doing this, um, you can smell the hard note because hard note only will come out after 
10 minutes. You know how some people uh, spray their perfume? Um, yeah, some people do it yeah. here, some people do it uh, spray on the neck, uh, some people do it on the clothes and mm -hmm. stuff. How do you actually use a perfume? The best way <laughs> to use a question. perfume so that, it, it, yeah, so that the, the smell uh, stays yeah. for a very long time. Yeah. Because um, usually people will spray on the wrist, yeah. um, but usually I would advise people to do that because on your wrist, um, the pH is more acidic. So oh. when it's more acidic, mm. it will turn the perfume to be that. more sourish. Okay. So usually I will advise people to spray on here or on the arm or maybe here if you're not wearing any accessories or okay. even behind the neck because especially for the ladies, if you have long hair, when you spray behind the neck, then when you move, your hair will be breathing out some scents. Ah, oh. wow. So that's how it changes, you know, that's why, that's why it smells differently on different people. Mm -hmm. And usually people, I won't it? advise people to spray uh, behind the ear. Behind the because ear? Because it's a very acidic as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. turn your perfume, what, sourish? Sourish, yeah. Okay, okay. For, for guys like me, do we spray it on the head? <laughs> no? Does that work? No? <laughs> it's just checking. This laughter says it all. No, doesn't work when you spray your perfume on a bald head. So you have you have some stuff to show us. Uh, you've got a collection for Christmas as well. I was yeah, it will be for this Christmas. We'll be doing a Christmas set packing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes with the Malaysian birthday. So we have the small pouch and the small bag. Yeah. So it's more for the tourists. So because. When tourists come here, they like the, the bate a lot. So mm -hmm. that's why for this Christmas, we are packing it in a bate bag and pouch. So how, how do people uh, get, get your perfumes? Are you online? Do you have a physical store? Um, I don't have my own stores, but mm -hmm. I sell in other retailer shops. Mm -hmm. So of course, I do have my own online on my website. And usually we sell in um, airport duty free. Uh, tourist places mm -hmm. like um, like in Penang, we have it in Kukongsi, Chongfazi Mansion, or even the Pinapunaka Mansion. Oh. And then we also selling in some hotels mm -hmm. in Penang, like Panaga, um, Bayview Beach Hotel, and then um, also in some shopping malls, um, perfumery shop in shopping malls in Penang and KL. Did you know that you're the most popular Josh Lee when you Google Josh Lee? Really? Your name's like the first one that comes out. So, you know, is that a strategy as well to sell perfumes online with better online marketing? Yeah, because um, usually it's, Josh Lee is it's easier for people to remember mm -hmm. rather than a, a long name. Yeah. Right, right. And then people usually as associate, you know, with, with the person, the creator of, of the perfume. Yeah. yeah. So awesome, man. I mean, it's great to know that another Penanga is, you know, rocking and really making Yeah, although changes. they're rivals. Uh, rival exactly. schools. They're from different schools. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. so, so, but we won't talk you know about what that we're talking later about after you're the from show. The same school. We can discuss more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, Josh, what do you see yourself, uh, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, we'll be doing more heritage perfumes and hopefully we'll be capturing the sense from all over the states of mm -hmm. Malaysia right. and then even like in ISL um, the, uh, our current princess Tengku Putri Her Royal Highness Tengku Putri Shafinas yes. um, she has made a, a good um, um, suggestion that um, to do a, a perfume based on Gunung Jorai wow. because um, her, her, um, her story is because the Malay population uh, started from there, All right. so it's a good idea. Yeah. Right. Right. So once again, Josh Lee, thank you for joining us thank and you. explaining to us all about uh, perfumes and fragrance and stuff. I wonder how KL smells like. Traffic. <laughs> <gasps> smells of traffic. <laughs> Probably smells of you know, the car that you're in <laughs> during traffic. Uh, anyway, I feel so educated today. I, I mean, this is one of the shows that you know, really learn something. Yes. And uh, we hope that you guys benefited from the show yeah. as well. Uh, I know you've got a lot of things to do. Today is a holiday for yes, those uh, of you who are for most of not us, working, not everyone, but for most of us. <laughs> so stop by, right? I did that once again to all our Muslim viewers. Thank you for watching. I'm Terence. I'm my name Salam Adha. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, again. Hello.